Hello everyone, I'm Paul Wyatt and thanks for downloading this episode of Web Design TV. Today we're taking our first look at Adobe's Dreamweaver um, with an introduction to formatting text using Cascading Style Sheets or CSS. Now a style sheet is a document which contains all your formatting rules for the HTML file that you're using. Workflow wise it helps by saving you time by not having to go through all the HTML for your whole site and change formatting rules but instead have it all in one central document which by just changing a few lines of code you can change your whole website. So say a heading tag needed changing across the whole site um, you would just need to go into the cascading style sheet or CSS document make that change um, save it and instantly all the HTML files that are linked to that style sheet will be changed. By separating content from presentation in this way, it becomes a snap to make sideway changes and um, just by altering a few lines of code. In our example today, we're going to use an external style sheet for our formatting rules, but as well as existing in a separate document, CSS rules can sit within an HTML document itself, usually within the head tag. I personally prefer to have them in a separate document, it just keeps it a lot neater and a lot easier. So we're going to look at Dreamweaver's CSS panel, uh, which does all the hard work for you, most of the hard work for you. Um, it'll create the CSS code, and in today's introduction to the CSS panel and the text properties available within it, it acts as a primer to when we revisit Dreamweaver and we look at, in a few weeks, we'll look at laying out a whole page in CSS. Look at the interface, this is Dreamweaver, and up there in the top right hand corner, I've got open the CSS panel. Now you'll notice that in most Adobe products now, you have this very familiar sort of layout of panels and the workspace area. Adobe love these panels which you can drag and resize, move around, move up and down, all this sort of stuff. So it's quite good, I mean it customizes the workspace uh, for, your, for your own needs. So I've done that by dropping down the CSS panel which is there. If it's not shown on the right hand side when you open up Dreammover you can access that by going to the window command and going down to CSS styles. Within this panel, we'll create all our formatting rules for our, for our text, and, and it, it displays all the formatting rules, all the CSS rules, in the current document, which is it's opened up with. So we need to keep create two separate documents. One that's going to con contain the CSS and an HTML document. So let's do that right now. Okay, well let's save this as a CSS file. File, save as, and we'll call it site style and then drop down the save as type to style sheet with the extension CSS. Save that. There we go. Right, so let's create a new document. File, new. Oops. Then here with your options set here, HTML. Hit create. And then let's save that as file, save as, in the same folder as an HTML file, which it defaults to as CSS. Example. Okay, now I've got this, I've got Dreamweaver set here in design view, and as you see in the top here, you've got code, split, or design. Code, you would see the underlying code for the page. Design is back to where we were, which is just the visual representation of what the page will look like. And then split is, as it the name says is a split between the two, so you've got the code in the top view and you've got the design view, the bottom view. But for now I just want to go to design, the design view. Let's add in, let's just type in a header, web design TV, and then we'll just do a bit of text, just copied and paste a bit of lorem ipsum which is just filler text which is used a lot in advertising and when you're doing website designs and you haven't got the text or the copy for that site you just stick in um, lorem ipsum which is widely used as dummy text. So let me save that file, save and we'll add some CSS formatting to it. So let's start putting some styles into our style sheets and we do that by going to the CSS panel and in the bottom right hand side there, you've got a little icon with a little plus icon there, uh, which says new CSS rule, so let's click that. And you've got three choices there. You can create a custom style, which it defaults to, which you can apply as a class attribute to a body of text. Um, to do this, you select the class option there, and give it a name in the style 
box and then set CSS styles for it. The important to remember is that whatever name you give it must start with a full stop and the name itself can be any combination of numbers and letters. You've got an option there at the bottom where it says define in new star sheet or this document only. Well, this is a star sheet so we're using this document only. But if we were using an HTML file and we were adding stars directly into that, then we'd have the option of adding those stars at the beginning in the head tags of the um, of the HTML itself. Now the second option there is tag. Click that one. Uh, and this is when you redefine a current HTML tag. So if you drop that down you'll see all the different types of HTML tag which you can redefine. So let's say let's just find a P tag, paragraph tag. And let's say we, we clicked OK for that and we went through and redefined or gave it styles and formatting rules. Then whenever you have a P tag within your whole site where this um, style sheet is linked to, those attributes will take place. It's another example of how you can do global changes to a website just by changing a few style rules for tag. And the final option there, click that one, is the advanced option. What this does is define the formatting for a particular combination of tags. So in the selector box you would enter one or more HTML tags or select one from the pop-up menu. These selectors are known as pseudo class selectors, which you can access from the drop down menu there. And as you can see, they're there, style attributes for the anchor tag, for the tag, the A tag, which is um, put around links. And we're going to use all of these, so um, let's go back to the beginning. And let's go to the class option there. And I shall give it a name with a full stop of big text. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is going to be big text. OK that box. And this will bring up the CSS rule definition box. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more fun. Um, here in the first option here in type, we can select our font. So let's select, select Arial and the size. Well, it's big text, so let's make it extra large there. All different options there, as you can see. Smaller, larger, different point sizes. Weight, well, we want it quite heavy, so let's um, pick bolder. And I want to capitalize each letter, so select capitalize. And look at the style options normal, and the normal is fine. And that should be fine. So there you would just select apply. Let's just OK that. And have a look at the code it's generated there in the